Thank you for joining us. In our world today, with so many challenges and concerns, one area which consistently represents hope for a brighter future for all of humanity and the environment as well is that of education. Our guest today is Dr. Mark Rosenberg, President of Florida International University in Miami, Florida. FIU is classified as a research university with the highest research activity and leads the country in the production of minority degrees in the sciences and engineering. We'll learn more about FIU following these messages. When I was young, it seemed that life was so wonderful. A miracle. Oh, it was beautiful, magical. And then they showed me a world. Find magic again. Sprout by HP. With Intel RealSense technology inside, now you can bend the rules of creativity outside. Life Extension Foundation was established in 1977 and is now the world's largest consumer-based anti-aging organization. Life-saving achievements taken for granted today were pioneered by Life Extension Foundation decades ago. Life Extension is currently funding $10 million a year in research on significantly extending a healthy human lifespan. Diseases that once plagued humanity have largely been eradicated by scientific innovation. Three leading causes of death in 1900 are no longer killing people today. Smallpox killed millions before it was eliminated in 1979. Life Extension funds research to fight biological aging so that it also will become a relic of the past. To learn more, log on to lifeextensionfoundation.org. With us now is Mark Rosenberg, president of FIU. It's a real pleasure and privilege to be with you here today, sir. Thank you, sir. Nice to see you. It's so lovely being here on this campus. And I was just thinking, in a world of so much obscurantism, irrationalism, fundamentalism, it is so nice to be in an environment of intellectual science, technology, education, math, how refreshing it is to be with people who are in touch with the reality. What are your thoughts with regard to that and being the president of FIU? Well, college campuses are very special places. And our, our campus, we have one, of course, near the airport and, and one that is on the Biscayne Bay, are made even more special by the quality of our students. And the quality that I most admire about our students is their determination to be successful, sometimes against very, very high odds. Our students are determined, they're hardworking, they're full of hope, they're seeking opportunity, and there's no better place for that than, a, than, than our FIU. So thank you for, for recognizing just how special a place like FIU can be. A question I'd like to ask you is, how does FIU address problems facing society such as health, disease, immigration, and so forth? In many ways, universities are microcosms of society. So we, our, our mission is to promote learning through teaching, through high quality teaching, and to promote learning through high quality research. So we have uh, programs, academic programs, degree programs, community programs, research programs that address uh, health, wellness, sickness, uh, that address uh, the, the challenges confronting our society, whether it's a sea level rise or uh, income inequality or political uh, issues. We have programs in almost every domain that modern society uh, presents itself. And we have uh, motivated faculty, high, highly qualified faculty who understand that their responsibility is to promote student learning uh, to carry out state-of-the-art research 
and then to, uh, if, if, if at all possible, for our university to be a solution center uh, addressing those issues. Tell us a little bit about environmental studies. Environmental studies is very important here at FIU in Miami. Our geography is our destiny. And if you look uh, at a map of Miami, we're surrounded by water. We're surrounded by water on the north, uh, uh, to the east, to the, to the west, to the south. This university is actually located uh, right next to the Everglades. So since its inceptions, inception in 1972, this university has had strong programs focusing on water quality, on environmental quality, focusing on how to ensure that, that we have fresh drinking water, uh, even as we continue to urbanize and, and, and to cluster more and more citizens on this very little stretch of peninsula called South Florida. With so many students graduating every year, what influence and impact do they have on the local economy? Well, we're very proud of the fact that they do have influence and impact. First of all, this, this faculty understands that our hardworking students are here because they seek out great jobs uh, or at some point they will be the ones who create the great jobs. So we're very, very sensitive to making sure that our education is at once practical but conceptual enough so that as society changes, our students have the tools to change. And we focus very intensively on developing collaborations and partnerships, particularly with the private sector, so that our students get great practical experience through what we call uh, internships. And we know that the national data show that if a student gets an internship, they have a 65% likelihood of working with that company at a twelve to $13,000 premium. But if you look around South Florida, you will see that FIU graduates are among the leading bankers in the community. FIU graduates are, are mayors and commissioners and police chiefs. FIU graduates are among the leading entrepreneurs. A number of FIU graduates are in the U.S. Congress. Even more are in the state legislature. So there really isn't any place you can't go now where you'll run into one of our 230, 240,000 graduates. And outside of Miami, uh, we have perhaps 3,000 alums in the Washington, D.C. area. We have a huge alumni association in New York, a large alumni association in Seattle because so many of our students go to work uh, with Boeing and uh, Microsoft. We have a very large uh, student uh, alumni association in LA, in San Francisco, in Dallas, in Chicago. So if you're an FIU graduate and you're outside of Miami, you're going to find other FIU graduates because the competitive marketplace likes our graduates. So much to be proud of. Oh, there is. Now, things are changing in Florida. And uh, how is FIU dealing with these changes with the funding and so forth? FIU is a, is a resilient institution. We were created in the 70s during a period of, of economic difficulty. So we understand how to survive and thrive in a context of limited resources. We're very proud of the fact that we're generally regarded as one of the most efficient public universities uh, in the United States and in the state of Florida, and we're always ranked very highly in promoting the social mobility, in other words, the opportunities uh, for our students. We're in an era of performance funding where we don't get funding unless our students graduate in a timely manner and get good jobs, and we usually do very, very well. The performance funding model that the state of Florida has set up has actually made us better, stronger, and more efficient uh, in being responsive to citizens' needs. So uh, we, of course, don't always finish first or second or even third, but we recognize that the, that, that system of performance funding has made us better. In general, what are the challenges facing academia at this time in history? Well, I think that uh, the first challenge is managing community expectations. There are increasingly, it's known that, that to get a good job in the 21st century, you need post 
post-secondary, post-high school education, whether it's at a state college or through a certificate program or with a college degree. We know in the recession, that the Great Recession that hopefully is behind us, the unemployment for college graduates was half of what unemployment of uh, individuals was without a college degree. But also universities have become uh, politicized and uh, have become targets of a political debate that is uh, sometimes harmful to creating the civil society that we all know we must have if we're to have uh, the well-being that we, for our families that we want. Speaking of political correctness and controversy, there's a lot of criticism we hear that some campuses are perhaps too tolerant and thinking of uh, First Amendment rights. Correct. I had the privilege of interviewing Floyd Abrams, the number one, I believe, uh, First Amendment attorney mm -hmm. in the United States. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts with regard to what people allege sometimes is excessive tolerance with regard to opinions expressed on campuses? Well, that's a good question. And um, first of all, let's point out that there's, there's 4,000 colleges and universities in, in the United States. Uh, one size will not fit all. They're small, large, public, private, urban, rural, uh, research universities, uh, comprehensive universities. So it, truthfully, it would be hard to generalize uh, based upon those 4,000. Uh, universities have to be centers of tolerance. Universities, the best universities are those universities that are pluralistic, that, that understand that diversity is what promotes learning and creativity. However, uh, there are norms of civility that have often been crossed, uh, not just in universities, but out there in civil society, that, that, that we should not allow those norms of civility to be undermined in the, in, in, by having some slavish uh, commitment to political correctness. At FIU, I would say we've established a very strong balance, largely because it's our students who are here and they understand they're here because they want to get the very best learning they can get. And uh, the campus, I would say, is not politicized. There are politicized groups, of course. This will happen. But uh, the agenda is set uh, by the faculty. The agenda is set by the classroom professor. And um, we want to maintain the pluralism that is characteristic of the great public universities in this country. And I would say that we have, and I do not see, uh, a disproportional slavish commitment to political correctness uh, or even much of a commitment to political correctness. We are committed to uh, freedom of speech. We are committed to academic freedom. Uh, and um, I'd say we've been able to maintain a strong balance uh, here at FIU in those domains. I don't like dwelling on negatives at all, but tell us about security. That's been an issue on some campuses across this country. Uh, it's a, actually, it's an issue everywhere. Public safety and uh, across, across this country as a consequence of what regretfully happened uh, at Virginia Tech, the bar has gone up in terms of our, the necessity of making sure that we are fully prepared for any contingency that could happen. Uh, at a college campus. So I'm very proud of the fact that, that we've uh, added uh, police to uh, our uh, more and more police who are uh, employed at, at the university. Very proud of the fact that they are trained uh, to not only be very good at community policing, but also to be prepared for any contingency. Uh, our chief police, uh, Alex Casas, uh, believes deeply in training and in advanced preparation, but he's one of the best people I know in or out of uniform who's able to maintain contact with the community to understand what the concerns are. Uh, but I will never apologize for having well-trained police and for having uh, respect for law and order uh, on our college campus, uh, which we do. The, um, the federal regulations are very clear through the Cleary Act about the, the urgency of and sensitivity to student safety. And we're very proud of uh, at, that, at, that at our university, the police are well-trained, 
students understand uh, the, in, their rights, but they also understand uh, their responsibilities, and we've had uh, a limited number of incidents. We will have incidents. It's modern society, uh, but uh, we're very responsive to those. And uh, because so much of our educational offering is at night, we spent a lot of time in, in improving uh, campus safety and security at night through elimination, through a buddy system, through a call box system. And um, we can always get better, but we've, we've invested a lot in that. In a changing world, let's talk about positives a little more and sure. talk about STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and math. Tell us about FIU with regard to this area. Boom. STEM education is so important. Science, technology, engineering, and math, we know that 21st century competitiveness will be a function of our workforce understanding a complex math, being uh, competent in management of technology, and, um, un and, and as citizens, understanding basic science principles. And so FIU is actually a national leader in STEM education, particularly for minority students. That national leadership comes from the fact that we have uh, re restructured our science uh, and technology and engineering curriculum to make it more accessible to students who would like to be in these fields but who don't necessarily carry the adequate prior preparation to be successful. We know that uh, about only about 40% of students who uh, want to be in science, technology, engineering, and math actually complete degrees in those areas. There's a significant attrition. So FIU spends a lot of time with uh, uh, the high schools and secondary schools that send us a lot of students to make sure that the teachers and the advisors and students understand what the requirements are for success when they come into FIU on one hand. And we've also promoted something that we're national leaders in called learning assistance. We ask our most competent students in science, technology, engineering, and math to uh, tutor, essentially, our students. And we put, them, we put those learning assistants through a program that gives them the tools and the skills to mentor, to coach, to teach fellow students using their own language, using their examples, uh, how to master science, technology, engineering, and math. And the neat thing about that is that as a consequence of those learning assistants, they become more competent and a lot more of those individuals will stay in, in STEM areas through graduation. And FIU has been recognized for its leadership by the National Academy of Science, the Board of Science Education for being pioneers in, in developing uh, techniques that give students the skills to be competent in these areas. Now, why is, why is it important for more and more citizens to have basic science skills? Because we know that environmental challenges that we have, whether it's sea level rise or uh, the um, ozone layer that is being diminished, that citizens in this country today have to be in a better position to ask the right questions. So essential for humanity to live in harmony with nature, not at the expense of it. I'd like us to continue, but we have to pause for these commercial messages. We'll be right back. We're back with Dr. Rosenberg, president of FIU. Sir, I'd like to ask you a personal question. You actually were a member of the faculty right here at FIU. Well, I, I privilege that I came through the faculty, and I'm the first faculty member at FIU to be the president of FIU. That's not very common in, in higher education, so I've been blessed by having really good mentors here on the faculty. I've been blessed with a lot of support from the community and uh, my family in particular has made a lot of sacrifices so that I could be able to spend the time that would be necessary to be successful uh, here at FIU. I come from a family of immigrants, really. Uh, my mother is a survivor of Auschwitz, 
And uh, my father met her at a displaced persons camp and then basically helped her to relocate. He was a U.S. Army captain. He was uh, himself first generation here in the United States. But paradoxically, uh, his assignment uh, during World War II uh, in the U.S. Army was he was a captain of an all uh, of a segregated uh, company, all all black enlisted men. My father, um, as a uh, uh, as a as a Jewish officer, uh, was their was their commander. So here we are, fighting uh, World War II uh, to liberate Europe and and uh, and. Uh, uh, the, the Far East, and uh, yet we still have, saw some of the contradictions of, um, of segregation uh, right there uh, uh, that my father, you know, dealt with. But, but I'm blessed to come from, a, basically from an immigrant family. I'm first generation. We love Miami. We have a lot of friends. Uh, Miami's a global cosmopolitan city, so our connections uh, are into Latin America, are into Europe, are into Asia. We have great uh, working relations with a number of institutions uh, in Israel. Uh, we're trying to deepen those relationships and have recently had conversations uh, with Tel Aviv University that we're very impressed with that really has a similar trajectory as, as, as FIU. Uh, and um, so we're looking forward to those. You mentioned World War II and Auschwitz. Yes. And that brings the necessity of this next question. Why, in your mind, is it essential for neither Jew nor Gentile to be permitted to forget the atrocities perpetrated by Nazi Germany during World War II, not only against Jews, but many other people as well? Why is it essential for these lessons not to be forgotten? Well, genocide is, um, is the worst form of, 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 of human experience, drama. And uh, clearly, it's extreme was during World War II. Uh, there are other forms of genocide occurring that have occurred. But my instinct is that if we can tell the story of, of the suffering, of the pain, of the futility uh, of genocide, if we can tell it, repeat it, repeat it, I think we can convince people that there are other alternatives. I'm optimistic in that sense, uh, and, but I do think we have the burden and the obligation to find ways to tell that story. And uh, I'm committed to that, uh, although I understand that I, I need to be sensitive to the range of other experiences globally that as, human, as a human being and as, as part of humanity, we're accountable for, both good and bad. And uh, so we try to spend a lot of time at the university in making sure that students have a strong historical foundation. Uh, we have a, a strong studies program on the African diaspora. We have a strong program on Latin America. We have a strong program on Jewish studies. Uh, and, um, and as you know, we're proud partners with the Jewish Museum of Florida in, 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 in addressing that issue of people who are cast out of their own countries, uh, the diaspora, whether it's the Africa diaspora, in this case, the Jewish diaspora, uh, we, we believe in, in making sure that students are well prepared for those challenges and hopefully won't repeat the same mistakes that humanity's made in the past. What research is occurring here at FIU with regard to an open-minded attitude in cutting-edge research in health? Well, first of all, we're very concerned in health about primary care. We're very concerned about making sure that, that, that our community understands the sources of wellness. Did you know that about 70% of disease is socially determined? Bad eating, bad environment. Uh, and so we're, there's a lot of uh, malnourishment in this community. 30% of, 30 to 40% of our kids are, are undernourished. So we're very commitment at the base to just to having a healthier environment and closing the health disparities. We spend a lot of time on, on AIDS. AIDS uh, outside of New York, Miami is the epicenter for the AIDS epidemic. It so happens that one of our main sponsors is the Life Extension Foundation, and they are in the cutting edge of research into the diseases of aging. I'd like to share with you at some point some of the w research that they're right. doing with stem cell research as well. Well, the aging issue is, 
an issue that we are getting more deeply involved in, particularly uh, as a consequence of our partnership with the Leon Medical Centers, which largely uh, focuses on uh, adults and those who are, are the elderly. And um, the aging issue, historically, FIU has been involved in uh, early on through the Southeast uh, Center for, for Aging, and now through our College of Medicine and through our College of Nursing. And we know that demographically, the demographics are starting to move with a larger proportion of boomers in that category. And life extension could be one of the key issues of the 21st century. I think you, in fact, I, I think you will see life extension as a key issue. It will lead to some uh, moral and ethical questions uh, because of um, how we define where the human being ends and the machine begins uh, and uh, the issue of human and machine cognition is increasingly a subject of uh, research that we're involved in. Sir, how do you see the future for FIU? Well, I, I, I'm very optimistic for our community and I'm very optimistic for FIU. And what gives me optimism is the energy, the drive, and the hope that our students bring here. If you spend any time with our students, you'll see that they're not dragging around a lot of baggage from an earlier era. They're, not, they're, they're optimistic about their future. And it's our job to, to, to fan the flames of optimism by giving our students the tools, uh, both critical thinking skills as well as hard skills, so that they can be successful out there, whether they take a good job or they're they want to be entrepreneurs and create good jobs. So you can't be around uh, our students without drawing strength and energy for, for them. And that's why we have so many graduations at FIU. We graduate about uh, 13,000 students a year. This year we'll have nearly 30 graduations. And at those graduations you can feel the energy and you can feel the excitement and you can't but help walk away from those graduations feeling good about where we're going and how we're getting there. Absolutely a promising and inspiring environment. Thank you so much Thank for being you, with sir. me today. Thank you, Thank Mr. Pritz. Thank you. Great to see you. For 50 years, FIU has been serving a community that's seeking something different from its university, from the sawgrass of the Everglades to the boardrooms of downtown. Miami is a modern, global city built with an entrepreneurial spirit that's always looking forward. A city that moves at this speed requires a public research university to support it. And that's what we've been building at FIU since 1965. A locally engaged, globally connected university. This concludes our special show for today on education. I'm Richard Peretz. Thank you for being with us. The preceding program was sponsored by RCP Productions Incorporated and Friends of the Shalom.